Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Hello, my name is Sandra Grasser and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. By now you know that we have this amazing event coming up here in Dublin, which will be the first time ever that we will have a full dedicated weekend seminar on research and evidence in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. This will be with Dr. Gil Barzilai and we are so, so privileged to have the opportunity of running this course in Ireland. And I can tell you now that there's actually people coming from other parts of Europe to attend this course. So this is going to be pretty special. Registration is going at a good pace. As I said, the limited number for the early bird registration and the offers once the uh, places are full. I'm sorry, but that's the agreement that we had with our main supporters and the, uh, the, the cooperation that we got from, from everyone. So as you know by now, the event is fully supported by the evidence-based acupuncture. And on the Sunday after Dr. Gil Barzilla is finished with the lecture, we are actually going to have the privilege of having the director of uh, evidence-based acupuncture, Mel Hopper Koppelman, live to answer all the questions from everyone in the room that day. And remember, the evidence-based acupuncture will offer everyone who registers on the uh, early bird registration they will get one year free membership of EBA Connect okay if you want more information about that you can go on the website it's evidencebasedacupuncture.org the cooperation from the ICCM in Israel means that anyone registering on the early bird registration will get a 10% discount on the days if they are attending the uh, the ICCM in March in Tel Aviv and obviously the sponsorship from Pro D Seminars means that anyone who registers on the early bird will get a special 25% discount on courses on Pro D. So those are exclusive to early bird registration. There's a limited number, so please don't miss out on this. As I said, registration is going at a good pace and we are really, really excited because the people registering are really, really top names. So you don't want to be left behind. This is going to be the first time that this is going to happen in Ireland. We all know how research and evidence is so important important for us to be able to communicate not just with the patients but actually with other medical practitioners. So this is going to be a big big thing. But you don't really want to hear that from me do you? Um, best if we go and hear this from the main man himself. So on the other side of the line I have Dr. Gil Barzilai waiting to come online and tell you exactly what you can expect. So he's going to give you a little bit of a preview. I think he actually put some slides together. So it's going to be really, really like a, a here's a taster of what you can expect from the uh, from the whole weekend. So without any further ado, let's go to the other side of the line and go to split screen to see what Dr. Gil Barzilai has to tell us about this amazing course. Dr. Gil Barzilai, thank you so much for being here. The, I was just saying off camera, introducing you that uh, we have registrations from other other places in Europe. Actually, people coming in to uh, to Dublin to uh, to see this. this it's the first time that we have this in a, a full weekend of research and evidence in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. I believe you have a little bit of a preview for us, so you can give us a little bit of a taste of what to expect. Exactly. So that's the purpose of this short call is really to give a taste of what is going to be uh, presented and shared and discussed with the uh, attendants uh, over the weekend. First and foremost, like you said, this is not a, a course in research. No one's going to come out with, a, uh, with the ability uh, to conduct research uh, or to do a degree in research. Um, the whole idea is to uh, give a real pragmatic tool for a therapist to uh, discuss um, uh, research with their patients, with colleagues, uh, with politicians, if that's what they need in their own uh, countries, with whoever. So just to be able to look for it, understand it, and be able to talk about it. And that's what I'm going to uh, try and explain in a little bit um, in the next uh, few slides. So uh, uh, the first slide actually uh, shows um, what I believe in is that uh, research is really part of our uh, toolbox as uh, therapists. We of course study whatever we study, TCM and on top of it, um, Qigong or Tai Chi and uh, Shiatsu or any other uh, additional techniques and tools in our toolbox. But at the end of the day, what makes us a little bit different from Western medicine is that we spend a lot of time with our patients. And when they're lying on the bed or on the chair, they actually ask a lot of questions for themselves to try and understand what we're actually doing to them and why it is or not working for them. 
um, and also for their uh, friends, relatives, whatever, uh, wondering whether this works um, for that disease or another symptom. Um, oh, and I forgot to say, here's another thing that I'm suffering from and stuff like that. So all of these questions come up during the half hour or one hour, uh, however many, um, uh, many minutes you spend with your patients. And that means that we need to be able to answer uh, questions. Just talking about the fact that it's an ancient medicine is great, um, but people read, read the headlines, read the newspapers every day. And to be honest with you, when you look um, uh, at this or the last few years in the next slide, um, you can see that uh, we still have uh, a lot of skeptics. Um, you can see there uh, acupuncture is a theatrical placebo. Uh, you can see the definition from Wikipedia and whether we like it or not, Wikipedia is the most uh, important or relevant or used, I think. Um, just like Dr. Google, um, it is the most used encyclopedia. Uh, and so people actually go and look for what is acupuncture. And what they'll find is that it's uh, not based on anything and it's pseudo science. Um, and you see all these other articles that some of them are nastier than others, but these are questions. Um, some of them are um, good questions on whether acupuncture works and why does it work. And so we need to uh, provide these uh, access to them. I can't say that everything is bad because if you look on the next slide, there's a lot of news, good news as well. And uh, I think it's slide number four. And the good news means that, again, we get a lot of questions, this time maybe from a positive point of view, but we do get a lot of questions. Um, for example, with the opioid crisis that is making headlines everywhere around the world, and especially uh, in the US, people hear that um, cognitive behavioral therapy or acupuncture or other techniques are good to come off and to treat their pain uh, in the right way, but they want to know how does it work. Why should acupuncture work for them in um, treating their own pain or even on uh, for coming out of um, the opioids that have been, they have been using. When Angelina Jolie, for example, talks about her Bell's palsy, um, you could see the statistics for Google uh, search. A lot of people didn't know what Bell's palsy is, and certainly that acupuncture works for it. Now, in Western medicine, hardly anything works for Bell's palsy. We know it as therapists, but most of the population doesn't know. So they don't know what Bell's palsy is. They don't know what she suffered from. She looks great on this photo, but she talks about the fact that acupuncture helped her. And that means that patients will be asking about this. Yeah. We'll be asking about other diseases. We'll be asking about why should it work for that? That seems like a neurological uh, issue. That's something that happens with the face. Why should it work? So like it or not, we have to talk to our patients. We can talk about the holistic therapy and the mind body and everything. That's great. It should happen. Um, why people should adopt better nutrition, lifestyle, etc. But when they want to know why and how does it work and does it work for cancer for other types of pain that they've not been in, you know never knew that it may work for they want mm. to know and that's why we need to work uh, we need to talk uh, about research so that's the whole purpose of this um, course yeah and, and you know j just to say there that's part of the reason why you know with the support from the evidence-based acupuncture to actually put this event together and getting someone like you to come over and do this and now we're seeing that this is not just going to be for irish practitioners because there's others coming in as well that is a very key point so you're talking about not only the, it's that distinction between not only being able to talk to the patients but actually and that's going to be kind of like one type of language but then knowing how to talk to the other professionals as well because you're not going to use the same language, you know, let, let's be realistic. No, you're not going to use true. the same language if you're talking to, say, a GP. But you actually exactly. want to have that tool in your box as well, because if you want the GP to refer the patient to you because of Bell's palsy, you kind of need to know what are the studies out there, what is the evidence supporting that, because you can't be using the same language about mind, body, and spirit, and all that. That's, that might be appropriate for the patient, but not really for the clinician. That's true, yeah. Mm. And so that's kind of the, the, the first part of the first day where we'll be talking about the need and giving a lot of examples of where the situation where we are because we have to face the reality. Uh, the second uh, part of the first day is really uh, um, sort of showing how to look for um, uh, publications and how to be able to find them and download them or be able to read them. Um, and like I'm showing on the next slide, um, there's, uh, I'll be highlighting, first of all, what are the key tools uh, to look for uh, publications and what are the key journals that are now uh, supporting our profession. 
uh, but then I'll be going into how to read the publication because it look as it can look as messy as this uh, slide is. But uh, there is a lot of data, there is a lot of information, and you need to know uh, where to look for it and how to be able to read it and focus on what is relevant to our professional. Because let's face it again, most of us will not be spending days and nights now looking for articles and reading them and analyzing them. So you need to know where to go in that publication and uh, how to read it properly. Um, and so that's what uh, the next slide, which is slide number seven, um, I jumped slide, it's a duplicate, um, is really talking about the basic terminology. There are things that we will need to go through um, that are basic terminology, that uh, like you study in every profession, like you've studied in, uh, we've all studied in and young and the uh, five elements and, and whatever. Uh, these are some of the basics that you need to go through, the types of uh, clinical studies uh, that exist, how is research being conducted and what are the, in Chinese medicine and what are the issues of that. There's a lot of um, skepticism about the way Chinese medicine uh, studies are being conducted. So again, not going into the details to make people researchers, but to be able to understand what they may hear from colleagues about um, uh, research that being conducted in Chinese medicine. And what is clinically meaningful? So when they read a publication and they actually find something on, on a specific disease or symptom that interests them, do the results of this study, is the study good? Does, um, do the studies, uh, are, the st are the results clinically meaningful um, and how to look for it? Um, so these are the type of things because once they will know that, we'll go through a lot of data and that's uh, what we'll be spending for the rest of the day uh, and a half. Um, and so what you can see on slide uh, number eight is uh, essentially part of the questions that we'll be uh, discussing, part of the questions that everyone asks, uh, what are meridians, um, how does acupuncture work, what do these needles do uh, in our body? The same questions that we get, you know, if someone has a headache, why are we needling them on liver three, for example, uh, at the, you know, uh, on, on the foot uh, instead of treating their headache? You know, they have a migraine, they don't have something. So these are the type of things, and I'll be going through some of the evidence with a lot of, um, I would say, um, players um, in, the, um, in the, the way acupuncture works that we all know. We all have heard about serotonin because we've heard about depression and antidepressants and stuff like that. There are a lot of players um, that acupuncture essentially stimulates or inhibits, and that's the reason why it works. So I'll be going through what is known now. There's a lot of more coming um, uh, through in the last two or three years. Uh, you need to sift through the data and find out what is good and solid now and can be added into the explanation and what is still awaiting further uh, exploration. And after that, we'll be going um, to all the therapeutic areas that I've highlighted on the um, final slide, um, uh, on, the, on the slide before, which is uh, concentrating on pain, uh, concentrating on digestive, on shen disorders like depression and anxiety, and insomnia, um, respiratory uh, diseases, um, um, of, and uh, gynecology, and the menopause, of course, um, and other uh, therapeutic areas like that. And in fact, on the uh, last slide, what I've tried to show was when I enter into each therapeutic area, this is what it looks like. So it looks a little bit messy uh, with all the titles of these articles, but this is just to show you um, all the articles that we'll be going through. So this is actual evidence that the therapist, anyone in Europe coming in or in Ireland, uh, can actually take and discuss with their colleagues or patients, um, whether it's neck pain, shoulder pain, osteoarthritis of the knee, uh, headaches and migraines, of course, and stuff like that. So that's what uh, entering into the Narnia of, um, of, uh, of uh, publications on each therapeutic area is going to look like. Yeah, so that's that's actually a very good way of putting it because I don't know if you noticed that, but on the um, on on the evidence based acupuncture, what happened was about a month or two ago, someone asked, "What are the top three studies that I should know when I'm talking to a neurologist?" And that gave us a very good idea of like, oh yeah, maybe we should be doing this for all the conditions, you know. Just yeah. then you can kind of like update them as as time moves on. But yeah, what are the top three studies that I really should know if I'm focusing on one particular area of treatment that might be you know the area that you like the most? That is um, that is really really good. And can I just say that for anyone who actually wants to get a taste of what you do when you pick apart the study, I'll leave the link up here and they can go and check out your own vlog because. 
you do that on the on the three minutes on on research and evidence and that's that's yeah. kind of like a very very good pointer of how you turn the you know like what eight to ten pages of, of, of a study into here's three minutes and here's what you should know here's what you need to know yeah that's yeah. the whole purpose like i said i mean that's why uh try to trying to avoid it is, is another way but uh <laughs> trying to to have the tool yeah. uh and be able to to use it to the maximum is the best way and and not you know again even in my life even though i enjoy reading research and i've done it uh for several good years um it's not that i read and write and talk about research all the time but it's mm. those type of patients or our type of patients who do need this type of evidence and it is the colleagues and it is the politicians the lobbying that you do uh, as associations um, around uh, Europe trying to uh, advance um, uh, TCM into a common practice um, that you need to discuss these things because that's the first thing that they will ask so yeah I really like that so analogy what... of, of the toolbox that really really makes sense in you know to me so I hope that the the message goes out to to everyone as well that you know it is another tool on your tool it doesn't mean that you're going to be spending the rest of your life now reading about research but it's a handy tool to have there to be able to communicate so it's great now yeah. Listen, thank you so okay. much for your time. I'm going to, you know, the link has been down here. People can go and check it out. It's been on social media as well. Thank you for sharing. It's great that the uh, that people, as you know, people from other places are seeing it too. So that, that's good. So the message is getting out there. And yep. what can I say? I'm looking forward to it. So, um, yeah, thank you Same. so much for your time. All right. Talk soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs.